Well, here's a Motorola I recently acquired. I'm going to do a video on this mostly because it has kind of an interesting story and also it seems like vintage electronic videos on YouTube are just, of course, in today's modern age are dwindling, whether it be a reel-to-reel, -reel, you know, something like this, or even a TV, whatever it is, you know, they're not, not very commonly uploaded, and the few people that do upload them either abandon their channel or don't upload very frequently so you know I'd be happy to add to the collection there is a few videos you know but anyway obviously Motorola transistor AM only after looking inside it's actually from 1969 this is actually a local rummage sale find for the very expensive price of a dollar and I could not pass it up for that price and the guy with the sale even plugged it in to prove it worked which was definitely surprising and this thing is definitely abused whoever had this was there's the big crack there which is kind of the deal breaker well, you'll see in the pictures this thing was filthy dirty just completely abused it probably sat for decades but it still works, which is the most surprising thing about it, other than the price. It kind of does surprise me, too, that people just... When these came out, they weren't meant to be that disposable. People treated them like absolute just crap. <laughs> Even though some of them were really expensive, too. This was obviously a low-end model. But this also came in an AM-FM version I've seen from 1967. Another video of that posted on YouTube. Which definitely, of course, cost more. But anyway, high voltage, yeah. And it uses like some people pointed this out too, one of the old style cords that were commonly used when tubes were in play. But there is high voltage, so I could see why they used it. And you'll see the inside too in the pictures I put in. And now there's actually, as you can see, there's some shine there. But it was just so bad when I got it. find the model here. Yeah, XT11DH, 7 watt. There's a 59 there, and the one I saw online at a 67, apparently for the year, but there's no way this is from 59, so that's just... I'm not sure what that sticker was for, and apparently it was in... owned by a car dealer, maybe? Well, it's definitely traveled far from there. But anyway, more. this is more of even a rescue video than anything. Something this abuse was just needing to be saved, and I didn't, well, I didn't properly restore it, you know, replace all the defective components, but it works good enough the way it is, and I basically did more of a cosmetic restoration than electric. And the cord on this was so just dirty and sticky, I actually had to take it off and wash it in the sink because it was so... And it could still use more, but I, you know, for how much I'm going to use this. Not like I can use it that much because AM around here is just junk most of the time. On weekends it gets a little bit more lively, but during the week it's just rush and political bullcrap. You know, there is music stations out there. Just, of course, none where I live, within at least 100 miles or so, or what is it, 150 miles, there's not any. Now there is usually a music station on at night, but I have been having trouble picking it up, that I listen to from 700 miles away. That's about the only way to get music on AM during the week here. Thinking moments like that, but in retrospect... That'll give you some memories and some bragging rights, too. John is in Bay City, Michigan on the Jim Bohannon Show. Yep. To get a little bit of bump. This evening, Very sir. well, thank you. Appreciate the uh, segment you had on earlier about 9-11. We appreciate that. And uh, probably some of the, the worst storm experiences I had uh, for several years... Uh, delivered propane in northern Arizona and 
You know, I'm surprised this station's still on the air. This oh, is. Wait. You can see there. This is 1270. I'm just surprised, yeah. considering all they do is talk about political bullcrap all day long, every single day. I really am surprised they have any listeners, and how they're even staying on the air. It's probably just funding from the government or something. Well, obviously that was a joke, but I mean, uh, who's gonna fund this? Who would? Who's listening is a real question. And uh, lightning starts coming down. And it is nighttime, of course, so there's going to be some stuff rolling in. Usually during day, it's kind of dead. the training camp and all the workouts and everything as we know through the CBA there's been so many changes and this is a sports station I'm surprised they're on the air too considering why would you listen to a football game when you can just go watch it maybe if you're not close to a TV you're not a you don't have access to a TV but isn't the whole point of a sports game to see what happens you know on sports is just sports talk I'm surprised that's still keeping the station on the air. Have that. Rashawn McDermott in by the... Now, here's my thing. Um, I, I just... I understand the arguments for and against beauty patches. I understand that it, it sends... A bad message to women that they're judging their appearance. But I would just note that men are judging their appearance, too, in a lot of different ways. Not to the same extent as women. I'm not, you know, I know our, the world is a cruel place and it's unfair and all that. Uh, but we're all superficially judged in a lot of ways. For men, a lot of the superficial judgment revolves around the size of our bank accounts. And that, sure. Like that has anything to do with... Wait, that's 800-390-9528. This call is completely confidential. Sure it is. Well, there you go. A little bit more lively of AM around here at night, but still one, maybe two music stations that are coming listenable at night and during the weekends it's a little bit better, but still some of the stations are just so, such a joke. Talk about sports all day. Talk about political junk all day. How do you stay on the air? But, you know, I could rant about that all day long, but... Well, there you go. Something like a rescue, pretty much, is what this was. Motorola, what was it? XT11DH. With a crack in it, just rescued from being abused. And letting it sit for years and years. And I probably will use this too. I, you know, I might as well put it back into service when there's something to listen to, other than talking about 9/11 and doing nothing about it. Thought I'd actually add on to this video with something that was actually meant to be played on, you know, a set like this, not stupid political talk all day long with my um, transmitter there, which is from eBay, by the way. It's actually not that good. You can just type in AM transmitter or something and that'll come up. This little portable thing. And it was around 45 bucks, I think. And it's... It does a job, but it doesn't do it that well. It's so weak. But anyway... And no, I'm not worried about copyright people who do... I see a lot of reviews of record players and stuff. They're so, oh boy, I better not play more than 10 seconds of this old song from the 50s. Copyright people are going to get mad at my video. Come on. If the, You can just look up a song, and if it's on YouTube already, there's no claim on it. Because if, the if there's a claim, it wouldn't be on YouTube. And no, I'm not afraid about copyright at all. I haven't had any problems yet so far, and if I do, I'll just pick a different song and redo the video. It's not that big of a deal, because chances are it's not going to happen. Thank you. 